So what we're going to look at next is the joint anatomy within this shoulder girdle. And what's so fascinating is that there's a few different pieces and parts within here that have a very unique ability to move. So this shoulder girdle in and of itself, where the humerus comes up and sits into the scapula, it's a very narrow and sh or it's a very shallow joint line, meaning the face of the scapula sits right like this and then your humerus sits right in here. It's designed for your arm to be able to have a great amount of range of motion. So we can reach up, we can pull ourselves up, we can push ourselves off the ground, we can reach out and pull things towards us. And so unlike the hip, even though that it's a ball and socket, it needs to be able to find its stability from all of the musculature and the tendons in and around the joint. And what happens within this joint line is that because the muscles on the front side of the body for the shoulder are so powerful, they can pull and rotate that shoulder forward and it makes that joint rub in, 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 in an awkward way and it can wear out certain parts of that joint line in a very uneven way that can facilitate a lot of the issues that we experience. So the scapula, which is part of the shoulder girdle, actually floats on top of the on the back side of the body and the only place that the whole shoulder girdle actually articulates with the skeleton itself is at this one spot right here called your acromion clavicular joint your ac joint or i'm sorry your sternoclavicular joint so at that sternoclavicular joint, what happens is that it deals with a tremendous amount of load as the arm is moving, and that can be a very difficult place to find balance and freedom within. And a very common place for a dislocation is as we land on an outstretched arm, or if I land on my arm on the ground this way, it can separate the collarbone from your sternum, and it really can cause all sorts of issues going forward. And how the body compensates for having such a mobile part of the body is that it uses a tremendous amount of musculature to suspend the shoulder girdle from the rib cage and the, and the axial skeleton. So as we transition into looking at how this shoulder hangs on the body, we can see that the arm sits in the front the, or on the side, the scapula sits on the back, and the collarbone on the very front side of the body essentially make a sling around the rib cage. And then there's these big powerful muscles that come off of the skeleton from the rib cage and attach onto that shoulder girdle. And it can be very difficult to try to find balance for some people because of the job or the hobbies that they have. As that arm floats inside that skeleton, again, all of our big musculature, the biceps, the triceps, uh, our subscap and our serratus, all of these different muscles that are supposed to help the shoulder move uh, can really cause a myriad of issues for many of us at home and a lot of our clients in our clinics. So as we look at this big pectoralis major, this big deltoid, all of these muscles attach in and along that shoulder girdle and they really are very strong and overpowering. There's actually some guys where their pectoralis major can be anywhere between three or four inches thick if they're big uh, bodybuilders or football players and they've really developed that chest musculature, it can really have a huge impact on, on the position of where that shoulder girdle is hanging and sitting within the whole structure. And so the muscles on the back side of the body for the shoulder girdle to try to bring the scapula back and rest in the correct position are actually relatively small compared to the massive muscles on the front side of the body. So on the back side, we can see these rhomboids through here that come off of the spine and they actually attach out onto the lateral border of the scapula and are onto the medial border of the scapula, that medial margin, and they're relatively thin. And so what a lot of healthcare providers do is that they try to teach people to contract that, the, those rhomboids to try to bring the scapula back, but the truth is those little muscles are never going to be able to compete against the big massive muscles on the front side of the body. Even if we had a person who was very even in the development of their musculature and fascial tissue from front to back, the truth is there's another force that we have to take into consideration with the shoulder girdle, and that's gravity. And as we lean forward and do everything in front of us this way, the shoulder girdle has a tendency to just round forward and go into that position in general. Now here's what's the interesting thing about this whole shoulder girdle is that the problem oftentimes is this big massive musculature in the front and fascial tissue tightening and binding down here and then those little muscles in the back are all the way stretched out and they're holding on. 
but the pain is reported on the back side of the body. Very rarely do people actually have pain in and through the chest region within that tissue, connective tissue on the front side of the body through there. And what happens is that they go into some really talented, really wonderful therapists that try to just strengthen that tissue back and they just can't compete. That's like having a, a, a tug of war and you have a team of sumo wrestlers against a team of ballerinas and there's just no way they're gonna be able to effectively compete against each other. As we transition into the outer layers of the musculature for the uh, backside of that shoulder girdle, there's a, a muscle group and there's actually three or four muscles that really get glued together on the backside of the body that prevent that arm and that shoulder from being able to reach up like it's supposed to, and that's through this region right here. The latissimus, which is a big bulky muscle on the back side of the body, which actually has a big shoulder motion. The teres major, the teres minor, and the trapezius all kind of get glued together through there. And when those are all glued together and they're pulling the, the shoulder down, it makes it very difficult to reach up. So people end up with a lot of symptoms and pain reported on the top side of the shoulder, all because the problem is happening from down below. So in the Relief Through Rolling curriculum, we're gonna be able to show you how to work the areas that are actually could be contributing to the problem of the body versus the, the symptoms of what's going on within that shoulder girdle.